Hello folks, it's Alex here and welcome to this video tutorial for DaVinci Resolve. In this video we're going to cover the absolute basics of Resolve and show you how to compile your first video using some drone footage from a Mavic Air. Now, quick note, as you get more experienced you'll actually learn quicker ways to do some of the things that we cover. However, this video is just to show you the basics to get you up and running. Right, let's get cracking. Now the first and most obvious thing you're going to have to do is open DaVinci Resolve. Now once you've opened DaVinci Resolve this is the first screen that you're going to see. Any previously saved projects will appear in this list here. Now to start a new project you can click on new project and then we give my project a name. And then I'm going to click create. Then let's just really quickly talk about the interface of DaVinci Resolve. The main thing you want to pay attention to first of all are these options across the bottom of your screen. You've got media, edit, fusion, color, fairlight and deliver. Now as a real quick overview, media is where you import all your media files, so videos, music, photographs, etc. Edit is where you actually edit, so that's where you use the timeline and you chop and change things. Fusion is for animation. Color is for any color grading that you wish to do. Fairlight is for editing music and audio and deliver is where you go once you've created your project to actually render the video file. Now the first thing we want to do obviously is import some media. So we're going to go to the media tab. Now in this screen we have three main elements. Up here we've got the media storage. If you don't see this, click on this button here, media storage, to open this. This is your PC. So you can see I've got a D drive, C drive and some external drives. On the right hand side we have a preview window. So when I'm selecting videos, I can actually preview the clip before I import it to make sure it's the clip I want. And then underneath, you've got media pool. Now at the moment, there are no clips in my media pool. That's because I've not added any. Once you add clips to the media pool, they're the, the clips that you'll be using to edit with. They're the, the clips you'll use within your video. Now a real quick tip if you are editing drone footage, don't try and edit a video with the clips still on the removable storage so make sure you move your videos off the SD card onto your C or D or whatever drive you've got on your PC or laptop before you start editing. Using this browser on the left hand side locate the videos that you wish to use. This works the same as any sort of Windows browser. So here are the videos I wish to import. Now there's a really key thing you must do before you start any video project and that is to set the timeline settings and one of the key things you need to pay attention to is your frames per second, your FPS. So as you can see here, these are all my clips from my drone. I've shot them at 4K, that's 3840 by 2160, and they're all at frame rate of 23.976. Now I should change my timeline to represent those settings. So to do that, I'm gonna click on the cog, or the gear, which is at the bottom right. I'm gonna to go to the master settings, and I'm gonna change my timeline resolution. Now, if you shot it in 1080p, leave it at 1080p, I'm gonna to go to 4K. And this one here is your important one. As soon as you import anything into Resolve, you can no longer change this setting, so it must be done at the very beginning. Now, everything I've shot is at 23.976, so that's what I'm gonna set my frame rate to. If you shot everything in 30 and you put it on a 24 frames per second timeline, you may end up with jumpy footage same as if you shot it at 25 frames per second etc so you need to pay extra special attention to this part here once you're happy hit save now we can start adding some clips to the project if i wish to have a look at a clip i can give it a click and then use the preview window here to play we've got play and i've got stop and i can also use this to scrub through the video i'm just going to select a few here i can hold control on my keyboard or I can hold shift, or I can do them individually. I'm gonna select a bunch, click my mouse, and drag. All these clips will have been added now to my media pool. And that's it. That's all you need to do to add media files. It's also at this point where if you wish to add music to your video, do the same thing, repeat the process, find it within your PC, and drag it into the media pool so it's there ready to access later on. 
Now, I strongly recommend that at various points throughout your editing, you click on File and Save Project. It doesn't matter if you go overboard, just as soon as you change anything, click Save Project. There's nothing worse than spending a bunch of time doing something for the software to crash and for you to lose all your hard work. So make sure you save the project regularly throughout the process. Once you've added all the clips, you need to move on to the edit stage. So click on the edit button. And now on the left hand side up here, this is your media pool. So there's a list of all the videos that we added. Now you notice this screen looks a little bit different. In the center, we have two preview windows. This one on the left previews the clips from your media pool. So I can have a look at all the clips and just see what's on each of the videos. This one on the right hand side is a preview for your actual timeline, which we'll get to in a second. And this down here is the timeline itself. Now the timeline is a chronological display of an edited sequence. You use the timeline to add layers and videos which actually create your video. The timeline runs sequentially from left to right. This line here is at the start of your video and anything that you add over here on the right hand side is the end of the video. It works sequentially from left to right. Now, what we need to do is to add a video file to the timeline to get started. Now, there are lots of ways to do this. I'm just gonna show you the most simple, which is the drag and drop. Now, generally, if you're a beginner, I'd advise to do this one clip at a time. You can add multiple if you wish, but if you're just starting out, I'd suggest to stick with one at a time. So again, I'm going to click and I'm going to drag and then release my mouse. Now, as you can see, my preview currently is still black. And that's because this red marker here is in the middle of no man's land and it has nothing to display. Now, if I click and drag this marker into the video clip, that's then when we start to see the video. Now, at any point, I can hit the space bar on my keyboard or I can hit play over here to view my clip. Now as I say, there's nothing here at the moment, so it's black, right until that point there, where it will start playing the clip. And that's how a timeline works. This is sequential from left to right. So I'm gonna move that right to the beginning. So I haven't got a black screen at the start of my video. Now you're probably gonna to want to trim your clips down. So this clip, for example, I might not want all of it. Now there's two ways to do this. If I move my marker to here, and let's say this is the part of clip where I wish to cut because I need to delete everything after this marker. I can put my marker here and then I hit Control and B on my keyboard and it will cut the clip into two separate clips. And then I can click this one and I can delete it using the backspace button. If I want to trim the beginning, I do the same thing. Control B, select my clip and then hit the backspace key. I can then click this video and move it to the left and that clip has now been trimmed down. Now the alternative option is to use your mouse, put it at the either the beginning or the end of the clip, hold the mouse down, and then you can simply drag. So I can drag that to shorten the clip. The same as the beginning, click, drag to shorten it as I need to and move it around. And that's how you trim the clips. Now I'm gonna add another one, add this one here. And let's say we do the same thing. I'm just going to trim this one down, move it over to the left. Now, as you'll see, as I move it towards this other clip, it will snap into place. And that's because of this button here. This is the snapping tool. If you're a beginner, I'd advise leaving this on at all times. If you turn it off, there's no snapping and it's really easy to either overwrite existing clips or to leave spaces in between. If you do accidentally overwrite a clip like this, you can hit Control and Z at any point to undo. I'm just going to turn that back on. Now at this point, all you want to do is start building up your video. Put the clips in one by one, trim them accordingly, and then just start ordering them in the sequence that you want. If you're unhappy with the sequence, you can just move them across or reorder them however you want. This timeline is yours to play with. When you're happy, you've reordered them. Just move them all till they snap together. Move your marker back to the beginning and then just hit space to play through. Once you've added all your video clips, you can then add your music. 
or you can add your music at the beginning, it's entirely up to you. And all you do is do the exact same thing, you drag it from the media bin and this time you just add it here to audio. Once you've built up your video, you've added your clips, you've trimmed, you've added any music and you've built up your timeline and you're ready to export, you need to click on the deliver icon. Now on the left hand side you'll see render settings. Now this is where you choose all the options for rendering or outputting your video. Now the first thing you'll notice at the top is there are a load of presets that you can select. Now I upload to YouTube, I create videos generally for YouTube most of the time, however I'm not a big fan of the YouTube default so I stick to custom. You can have a play with these though and you can select any and output accordingly. In this instance we're going to use custom. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is select a location. This is the location where the clip will be saved once it's rendered. So click on browse, you will get a window to explore a pop up and you can just choose the destination where you wish for the clip to be saved. By render, make sure that single clip is selected because you want one final video footage rather than a bunch of individual clips. Then select video. Now as I say, I do most of my videos for things like YouTube and Facebook. Now the YouTube guidelines say that you should use MP4. So that's what I always use. I use MP4 with the codec H.264. This is a pretty good default to use regardless of whether you're planning to upload to YouTube or not. It's a common format and codec which will work on social media and on your phone and on your PC and won't be difficult to play. So MP4 H.264. Now the resolution. This is where you choose your output resolution. Now generally, again, you'll leave this to be the same as your original footage and your timeline resolution. So if I've taken footage at 4K, I've edited it in 4K, I'm going to output to 4K. And then your frame rate. Again, you're probably going to want to leave this to be the same as the timeline. You can change it, but generally speaking, you're going to want to leave it to be the same. Otherwise, you'll end up with choppy output. Quality. Now this is an interesting one. This is where you set the bit rate of your video. What that essentially means is, is the overall quality of the output. How good does it look? Does you see any sort of compression? Does it look a bit mushy? This is all set within this option here. Now, if you're not planning to upload, it's just for your own use and you've got plenty of space, just leave quality, automatic, best. And your output will look the best it can be, but you will have a very large file. Now, if you're planning to upload it to the internet, whether it be social media on Facebook or YouTube, Generally, you're going to want to restrict it, otherwise you end up with a massive file which will take an age to upload and it's just going to be compressed on Facebook anyway, so it won't actually look any better. In this instance, click on Restrict 2 and then you need to manually set the bitrate. Now, the guidelines for 1080p footage shot at 24 frames per second for YouTube is 8 to 10 megabits per second. Now if you timed megabits by 1000 to get the equivalent kilobits per second, so in which case you want either 8000 to 10,000 kilobits per second. If you've shot at a higher frame rate, let's say 60 frames per second, you may want this higher, something more like 15,000 kilobits per second. Now if you've shot at 4K, this needs to be much higher. Again, YouTube recommends anywhere between 35,000 and 45,000 for 24 to 30 FPS footage. Now, most of you generally will stick to 1080p. If it's 1080p, you'd set this to 1080, 23,976, and 10,000 is usually a pretty good quality. You'll have pretty good video output, and it won't be too massive of a file that it's a pain to upload to Facebook or YouTube. You can leave everything else on this screen the same as it is. You don't need to change anything else. Next up, scroll back up and click on audio. So you don't actually need to change anything on here. Just want to make sure that export audio is ticked so you actually get sound on your video. File. The final thing you want to do is to give your clip a name. So earlier on we set its destination, but the file name is still showing as untitled. So what we need to do is give it a name. I'm just gonna call mine drone compilation. So once you've put the file name in there, it will say file name, drone compilation, location, D drive. And that's it, we're now ready to render. So what I need to do is click on the add to render queue. You know, it won't actually start doing anything just yet. 
and it'll just put it there ready to go. Once you're actually ready to start rendering your footage, on the bottom right there's a start render. Give that a click and the rendering will begin. It will give you an estimate of how much time is remaining along with a percentage. If you need to stop the render at any point for whatever reason, there's a stop button located at the bottom right. Once the render is complete, it will say 100% and then you can go grab that video file, have a look at it, upload it to social media, Facebook, YouTube, whatever you want to do with it, it's all ready and you've just completed your first edit within DaVinci Resolve. And that's it folks, it's as easy as that. DaVinci Resolve is as simple or as complex as you want it to be. If you're just doing basic edits like this, it's actually quite user friendly and it's relatively simple to get your head around. Drag, drop, trim your timeline, make sure everything's ready and then you can render it. Now, I hope that you found this video useful. Please let me know if you've got any comments or queries or questions. Pop a comment below or just give me a shout and I can see if I can answer anything else for you. So thank you, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.